What's the shittiest thing someone has ever done to you? I had a friend who was down on his luck. He and his wife had their first kid together. And shortly after stuff at work went pretty wrong. It was 85% his fault but it was pretty hard for him. I was approached by a big company and offered a job running one of their sites. They had two jobs available and one paid a few hundred a week more than the other. So I asked for the lower paid job. And recommended my friends for the higher paid job. Not long into the job he made done massive mistakes and ruined thousands of dollars of stock. He then blamed this entirely on me and now. I'm between jobs. Till. DR. Got me fired from a job after I recommended him for a job I was offered. Edit. Everyone seems to be making some pretty huge assumptions here. So I'll just clarify a few things. 1. I'd work with him for years. Pre-kid and he was solid. 2. We became friends through work. And I had no reason to doubt anything he ever told me. I work in hospitality. So ask any chefs how many friends they have outside their brigade. I discovered the lying after I lost my job. 3. I am aware most people look after themselves first. But he had a newborn. I couldn't really stand by and see a kid not have what he needs because I'd rather look after myself. 4. I discovered things were 85% his fault. After all of this went down. Hindsight man. It's a hell of a concept. Right? My 60 year old mother in law wanted to sign her house over to us because she has no retirement and no money saved. My wife was pregnant with our second child and she told us she wanted to be a stay at home grandma. I would be coming in and paying for everything. So we sold our house. Paid off our debt. And cut a check for 54. 000. 000 dollars to her ex husband. Which paid off the house in full. Then I made 10. 000. 000 dollars worth of home repairs. All bills were transferred in my name. When it came to sign the deal. Suddenly she didn't want to do it. Told us she wanted things to go back to the way they were. My father-in-law told her well then we need to take out a home equity loan to give him their money back. She refused. The next week she served as an eviction notice and moved her boyfriend she claimed was abusive to her back in two days later. She threw her own daughter. My three year old. And my three month old baby on the streets. We tried to reason with her and then she had her lawyer threaten us with a restraining order. So now I'm suing her for my money back. Luckily my father-in-law is on our side and we were able to stay with him for the time being. Happened today actually. Some witch in her Aston Martin phoned the police on the non-emergency number because I parked my prolemobile next to her. She walked over as I opened my door and started yelling that I hit her car with my door. I didn't. She then pointed at where my door had gouged her car, which could only be seen by her. And started yelling that. We should respect people's property. To which my normally mild-mannered and very cordial friend gave his retort. And you should respect people. She said she was calling the police and we said good. They'll fine you for wasting their time. She said she was using 101 and my friend called her a mad old bint and we left her to it. I haven't been raided by the popo so far. So I'm assuming that us master vandals got away with it. Whatever it is in her mind. All that because a group of students dared to park their Vauxhall Corsa next to her Bordier Suigan. This just recently happened to me and it takes a cake for shittiest thing ever done to me. I went out with a friend who is also my new roommate a few weekends ago. I have been feeling down and insecure and just wanted a night out to distract myself. I told her how I was feeling before the bar and a little while we were sitting down at the bar. Soon after some old man brought two guys to our table and asked if they could join us because it was getting packed. We both said okay. It was very weird. But we are friendly and outgoing so what the hell. I'm sitting by a guy that I'm not attracted to but he's very nice so at least it's good company. She is sitting next to a guy who I was attracted to. Now at this time my friend was talking to four different guys. She uses the Bumble app and is very successful on it. So that being said, we go up to the bar and order everyone shots and I tell her I think he's cute. She says she thinks he's okay and offers to switch seats with me. I say no. I don't want to act all high school about it. 
so we go back to the table and not five minutes later they are exchanging phone numbers. Five minutes after that her legs are across his lap. His arm is around her and they are in full on cuddle mode. I was completely confused. I had just opened up about how shitty I was feeling about myself lately as well as telling her I think this guy is cute and she takes him for herself. Not to mention this makes guy number 5 for her. I went to the bathroom and cried like an idiot. No friend I could think of would ever do something like that. So. There it is. It doesn't compare with most of these posts. And considering this is over 17 hours old. I doubt anyone will read it. But it felt good to get it off my chest. I had a babysitter when I was in first grade that I blame all of my social anxieties on. This old woman was a devil. She sat a lot of kids and only the one related to her got special treatment. Every other kid had to just sit there and watch the favorite play with toys. When it was time for food. The favorite got to sit at the table whilst we were on the floor. We had a time limit to eat our chef boyardees and the last kid to finish would get hit with the hard end of a flitwitter. I remember finishing and looking at the other kid. He immediately started crying and I just had to sit there and watch as he was scolded for not being fast enough. The favorite thought it was fun to bite people. Numerous times when I was waiting for the bus I would turn around and tell her I had to use the bathroom. She would just yell at me to shut up and face the road. Shortly. Streams of urine darkened my pants and festered until the school had me a change of clothes. One day when my mom dropped me off I started to cry as soon as the minivan door opened. I wouldn't tell them why and I would love to believe my parents were smart enough to link up what was happening. I associated these events with my bad habits 20 years later at work one day. I started crying because I realized there was nothing I could do about what she did to me. TL. DR a babysitter tortured me as a child. I was in the military and deployed to Iraq. I had a girlfriend who was living in my house with her sister and I set up an account and directed money to it to pay bills. Went home on leave. House was trashed and almost empty and none of my bills or rent had been paid for 3 months and my car was repossessed. That was in 2006 and it took me until last year to really recover financially and get my credit to a decent level. Also. For years afterward she would still hit me up on Yahoo like I still wanted to talk to her and like nothing had happened. I had a friend who I had known for years who had some pretty major issues come up in her life and needed to find a new place to live and a way to pay for it. I agreed to rent her an apartment, by the beach, and pay her rent for a little while until she got things in order. Not only did she lie to me for 4 years about her progress, going to school, looking for a job, etc. Comma. She was suddenly diagnosed with lupus and it was going to kill her and she didn't care and wasn't going to get treatment. But that also meant that she couldn't ever look for a job and pay her own way. This is when I finally realized that I was being taken advantage of and lied to and I gave her 4 months to get her shit together and pay her own rent. Well. She didn't start paying her own rent and I get a call one day from the landlord saying that I owe him 3 months back rent because it's still in my name. I work things out with the landlord so that he won't put my name on the eviction papers, it cost me over $5k to save my credit. But when she answered the complaint against her, she had the nerve to say that she had been giving me money and I was keeping it and not paying rent. Fuck her. Turns out, she had been having her convicted felon. Drug addict boyfriend living with her in the apartment I was paying for. She ended up getting arrested for felony possession of meth about a month after her eviction. As far as I know. She's still homeless. I'm good with that. My ex and I were at a pub to watch a sports match together. She drank two bottles of wine before leaving. We get to the pub. By halfway through the game. She's horribly drunk and keeps spilling wine. Did it about three times. Then she did it again and spilled her glass all over me. I got pissed off and walked out. She follows me out. Demands to know what she did wrong, seriously. I said get in the car. We're going home. Ended up blowing up into a huge argument across the street from a police station. Cops confiscate a bottle of wine she took from the pub and put in her handbag, which is illegal here. Liquor licensing laws. They tell me to take her home. Driving along a highway at 90 kph, 
About 55 mph. Another argument blows up in the car. Demands I pull over so she can't take a cab home. I just told her to shut up. She pulls the handbrake on my car and I skid out of control. Someone almost crashed into me too. I stupidly stayed with her for another 6 months before we broke up. But I really wish I ended it that day. I tried to forgive her. But I just couldn't. I have to because I can't pick which is worse. 1. I got my drink spiked and was raped at uni. My ex, boyfriend at the time, told everyone I cheated on him and became abusive so I stupidly stayed with him. He would tell me that he'd told everyone I lied about being raped to get out of the fact I had cheated. Just because I was too scared to go to the police. I quote. No one will believe you. Everyone knows I'm a good Christian guy. Dot. What makes it worse is that I had just moved out of my hometown where he lives. So everyone there believes him as I haven't had chance to clear my name. To add insult. He actually cheated on me and gave me chlamydia which was nice. The only way I got out of the relationship was for him to dump me so I flirted with guys on Facebook and deliberately left it logged onto his PC. 2. Another ex. No red flags up until this point my taste in men isn't as bad as this post to pics lol. Decided to tell me he was going to stay alone at a hotel with his ex and also would lie about getting beaten up. Which obviously was enough for me to end it. When I did. He posted nudes of me on Twitter. Lied to people that I'd tried to trap him by faking pregnancy. It was actually a late period. Which I had made clear from the off and kept him informed. Made various other lies and then began to threaten me. Rang me 25 times in an hour. I went to the police who did absolutely nothing. I moved away from home for 5 months across the country for a work project in Florida. I lived with my then GF of 6 plus years. We were to get married within a year. For our 7 year anniversary I flew her into town and got us a really nice hotel on the beach along with a very, very nice dinner. This was 4 months into my stint. After our nice dinner we go back to our hotel room. I'm expecting romantic sex. Instead she breaks up with me. Gaslighting me saying I was an abusive man. And that everything was my fault. She was always like this but I was too young and experienced to see the red flags. I had to spend that last month away from home in what I would describe as the most anxiety inducing painful time of my life I've ever spent. When I came back home I came back to an empty house, 90% of the stuff was hers, and basically restart my life from where I left it and pick up the pieces. I find out a couple months later that she was cheating, who knows how long, and now has a kid with another man. To this day. Though I don't hate her. Words still cannot describe what I feel for this woman. It's a lot of nothing. Mixed with disbelief. Mixed with many many other bags of emotions. Silver lining is that things are great now. I learned a lot about myself and have become a way better man. So yeah. Bullet dodged. Ostracize me from the first day joining a new school. I had gone to public school until I was in 7th grade. Homeschooled for a year while we moved, the transition was smoother that way. And then placed in a very small private school for high school. This school was small. Like 12 kids in my graduating class small. And they were Christian. Heavily Christian. I had grown up in a big city about 5 minutes from a scatter park so most days of my life were spent there skating with friends and seeing shows, we had around 1-2 shows a week, from 3rd grade on. That old 90s punk versus prep mentality was still going strong at this time. And no matter how much I kicked and screamed about going to that school, my parents sent me there. I could tell plenty of stories of how I was treated. But it really all boils down to pure ostracization. I tried all four years making friends there. But we just never gelled. It was exactly like a cheesy movie where simple plan plays I'm just a kid while some emo kid walks down the hallway. Except I wasn't emo and I actually tried to make friends. It was almost like a cult. There were a few occasions where one or two of some parents from school would approach me and tell me they would pray for me. That I'd find my way to the Lord. Seriously. Weird four years of my life. I realize this one isn't a super exciting story of getting treated like shit. 
It's one of those situations where there were so many times where I was treated like shot that I can't remember a single one that was worse than another. I can say I'm better for it in the end and use those years of crippling depression to fuel my drive to get the hell away. But it was hard at the time. Needless to say. I despise Southern Baptists. I woke up one day and tried to call my fiancé to talk about dinner. But she wasn't picking up. So I called my bandmates to ask about practice later that day. But no one answered. I got a call from a friend who basically told me that. On behalf of all the above people. That I should not come around anymore. I went to the workplace of one of the guys in the band to find out what the deal was. As I'm walking through the parking lot. I see him driving towards me holding my fiancé's hand. They see me and stop. A mutual friend gets out of the back seat. I'm a big guy. So is he, and starts walking towards me. As if to prevent me from doing damage. I ask him if what I am seeing is what it looks like. He just nods. I turn and walk away. Got fired for being pregnant. Worked for a filthy rich property developer in Nick. As one of his secretaries, he had six. My hubby and I had been trying to get pregnant for years and when we finally did I was bursting with excitement. Anyways. Part of my job was to make this fuck with his lunch every day. Always the same, tuna salad. We all know how stinky can tuna is and when you're in the throes of morning sickness it smells way worse. Whilst making lunch one day. I was overcome with nausea and had to make a dash for the loo. Nearest one was his private bathroom. Made it to the toilet in time and managed to contain the explosion of vomit. He wasn't in the office at that moment so no harm done. The head secretary asked me what the fuck was going on and. Because I was so happy to be with child and needed to explain the rapid onset spewing. That I told her about the pregnancy. Next day I arrive into work and this motherfucking dipshit fired my pregnant ass. I tried to get some justice for myself through the appropriate authorities but was basically told tough shit. No contract, no compensation. Walker. Pregnant in Nick with no job and no insurance is not a good thing. I was starting to date this girl. And we had been going out for a couple months. One night. My best friend, at the time, was bored and wanted to do something. I told him me and, we will call her Lindsay. We're going to the casino and he was welcome to come with. We had fun and the night ended at the bar. He comes up to me and says. Dude she is hot and cool I like her. I said thanks thinking it was a compliment. I don't drink since I was driving and had to work. I went to get a pool table. I come back and they are talking and having a good time. I thought great. They are getting along. We meet at the pool table. Played a game and she ran to the bathroom. My buddy comes up to me and says. Dude I'm falling for this chick. Of course my response is. I'm dating her. You know that right? He then asks if we are serious. And then offered to give her a ride home since I was had to work in the morning. I said fuck no and then told Lindsay it was time to go and we left. The next day. He found her on Facebook and added her and he gave her his number so they can text back and forth. I called him up and asked what the fuck he was doing. He said that he couldn't stop thinking about her. I called her and told her and she said I was being mean. Insecure and if I'm going to be that way toward her and other guys then we were done. I found out a week later they were dating. Went to a random house party in my neighborhood about 5 years ago. Guy hosting party was my friend when we were younger. Hey man haven't seen you for so long. Why did we lose touch? Geez dunno but let's have a good time and get drunk tonight. Night goes on and there's about 10-15 people over. Start reminiscing of childhood and remembered how we used to play N64. I go. Dude I still have my N64. Ocarina of Time. Goldeneye. Diddy Kong Racing. Super Smash Brothers and 4 controllers. He'll go home and get it. This party is about to get wicked. Night goes on. Whole house of people having a lot of fun playing. It's getting late I have work the next morning. Feeling sleepy wanna go home. See him and his friends enjoying the N64 so much. I said hey dude. He'll come by and pick it up tomorrow you guys have fun, we live one minute walk away. Come by next day. His mom answers the door sorry he's not home. 
come by day after. He's still not home. But I hear him yelling at the TV or some shit in the house. Tell his mom I hear him downstairs and if he doesn't wanna chill with me that's cool. But I want my N64 so I can beat Ocarina of Time again cause that shit's amazing. She let me in. I go downstairs. My N64 is gone. Dude where's my N64? Didn't you take it man? No I didn't. I let you keep it for the night since you were still playing. Shit there were some people I didn't know over. Maybe someone took it. Seriously dude. Someone hauled out a N64 with a bunch of games and controllers. Cables without anyone noticing? Give him benefit of the doubt that someone stole it. Couple years later they're having a garage sale. My fucking N64 with my games for sale. Yeah I took that fucking shit back. P.S. I know this doesn't compare with the cheaters. Rapists. Etc. But it's fucking Ocarina of Time man. And I needed to hear the song of storms again okay? Probably gonna get buried but whatever. A few years ago I was eating dinner with my father when there's a knock on the door. It's the police. They tell us that we have 15 minutes to get our stuff and get out. We're confused. Turns out my mom. Who is disabled and has a suspended license. Took money out my wallet. Got a cab to the county courthouse. Went before a judge and told him that we, my father and I, were abusing her and got a restraining order placed against us. The whole process was a nightmare. We lived in a hotel for a month before eventually staying a few months with my aunt. Meanwhile, the entire time my mom is calling and taunting us. We had to go to court three times to finally get them to drop the restraining order. She never showed up once. She even left a voicemail on my phone admitting she lied and saying she'd never show up and the judge still rescheduled the court date after she no-showed. I had to spend money I didn't have on a lawyer. I had to drop out of college mid-semester because I couldn't even get my books from my house. It took over three months to finally get them to drop her case. I've literally never had my trust so betrayed. Not just in my mother. But in the legal system. It definitely fucked up my ability to fully trust anyone ever again. My dad, divorced from my mom when I was a baby. But we maintained a relationship and were. I thought. Close, told me my whole life that any college I wanted to go to. He would pay for. No problem. I shouldn't worry about it in the slightest. Junior year of high school rolls around. I apply to a wide variety of schools. Knowing that my finances will be taken care of by my dad. Who is wealthy enough to back up his promise. I get accepted by a private school in the Midwest. It is my dream school and my number one choice. Top 10 university. My dad suddenly throws a fit and says that I should just go to the local state school like all of my friends. And why do I need to go to some elitist big name school when the state school is perfectly good and much cheaper. Etc. He says he's not paying a dime. I said. Okay. I went to my school of choice anyway and funded it with student loans and eating ramen noodles for 4 years. It sucked and was a huge financial burden I hadn't anticipated. I got through it and in some ways it probably made me stronger. But it completely trashed my relationship with my dad. Met a girl. Dated her for a while. Her parents kicked her out for dating me, I was 3 years older than her and they didn't like that, so she comes to stay with me and my parents as I was living at home at the time. My parents are amazing. Work my ass off to get money to move out, while she did nothing. And eventually we decided to move back to her hometown because it's what she wanted. Again. Work my ass off while she did nothing. Worked hard to seal the rift between myself and her parents. Two years in we break up. And of course I'm devastated. She invites me to a barbecue a week later. And because I'm in love and desperate to see her I go round. Where she introduces me to her new boyfriend. Who she's been fucking for 6 months. Two weeks after that, two weeks which I mostly spent drunk if I'm honest, she gets in touch and asks if I want to come round for a quickie. Because she loves him but I'm better in bed. So yeah. That was fun. Funnily enough. Four years later, long after I'd moved on and broken contact, she called me the night before her wedding. 
saying she'd caught her husband to be messaging other women on Facebook. Oh how I laughed. I used to be extremely antisocial. Really bad. I met this girl. She was perfect. We dated for over two years. We did everything together. We went on trips together. I helped pick out her puppy. She was my best friend. I loved her. My family loved her. All my friends loved her. I had over $4,000 saved up to buy her an engagement ring. She helped me be a better person. She broke up with me over text message on a Monday night. We can't be together anymore. I called her thinking it was a joke. Like someone at her work at her phone or something. What do you want she says when she answered. This is over and she hung up. I haven't been the same since. This was almost 4 years ago. Well my best friend in high school got kicked out of his house at 16 for not having all this so my parents let him live with us for 2 years until we finished high school. After graduation my father got both of us jobs at his company. And helped finance our first vehicles. Wages weren't bad coming out of high school, basically we treated him like family. Fast forward 6 years he runs back to his sociopath mom who gives him a loan to start a booziness doing exactly what my family's company does. Takes one of our other employees with him. All of our client contacts, phone numbers, addresses, pricing act, comma and proceeds to call up all of our customers and tells them that my dad's company is going out of booziness. Now this would be fine if my father was a horrible boss. It would be justified. But to be honest he paid a decent wage. Great benefits. Laid back environment. And didn't try to micromanage every aspect of his employees. And if my friend would have asked he would have been more than willing to help them get started with their own company. He had done it in the past. When I was 18 I graduated high school and decided to go out and do the fun college stuff with my friends that were already in school decided to go downtown and get drinks with one of my girlfriends and a couple of other acquaintances. The girl I took with me originally I'd known since elementary school we've been pretty good friends best friends at that I would think and we were pretty inseparable up until that day. Ended up getting really drunk at the nightclub and puking everywhere so naturally the girls want me to put me in the car to collect my friend that I came with to go home. Instead she insisted on partying with my friends were trying to convince her to leave and in the meantime she said she just go check on me to make sure I was okay. Well instead she saw a man take me out of her car and then told our friends that I'd hitched a ride home when they knew that wasn't possible. So when they proceeded to ask her she just said she don't know I got a ride so they ended up calling the police. And for good reason because I was raped that night. And my friend. Lied to the police too. Because she's a wholesome girl with good moral values. And didn't want her parents to know that she lied to them about going to a club. So she insisted to lie to the police. If it weren't for those other two girls that I met up with that night who I'd only met and known for a few months nothing would have been done about it. I was so ashamed and scared because that girl went around telling everybody that I wanted to get fucked whenever I was dragged half or asleep out of a car. I lost half my friends because they believed her. Which was okay. But on the bright side or not necessarily bright BC nothing's happened yet but... If it weren't for those girls calling the cops and having them do the rape kit on me I would have never found my rapist. That was now 8 years ago and they just barely found him. Charges are still pending but 8 years later and I must have a sense of redemption and I'm no longer ashamed or scared about the situation but it was definitely one of the shittiest things that ever happened to me. My aunt. While my grandmother was dying in a hospice and all 30 plus of us were there to say goodbye. My aunt snuck away and robbed my grandparents. Took everything of value. And lots of homemade crafts that had unlimited sentimental value. Quilts made for specific kids. Beautiful woodworking pieces. Dolls crafted for each family member. ETC. And skip town. Two months later she has a psychotic break. Douses her entire house in kerosene and lights the match with herself in bed. Firefighters had to cut the window out of the house to get to her. Everything she stole was lost. No one in our family has any photos or memorabilia that belonged to my grandmother now. No crafts. None of her antique jewelry. None of her bonds. Nothing left to any kid from her will. Nothing. 
It hurts all of us so much we've cut Auntie out but she still tries to bully her way back in. When I was pretty young. Around my early teens. We went to vacation on the Canary Isles. I met this great girl there. And it was a real youth romance. One of the greatest holidays of my life. Orchid young me with this beautiful girl at one of the most beautiful places in the world. For a whole two weeks. Well. We tried long distance. So we skyped Alit. But she grew distance. But young and unexperienced me was in denial. Also in denial about Alit of other flags about her. Alit of which air and her fault. Difficult family etc. It was also obvious that she was desperate for attention. Always trying for something to be up. Anyway. As an extension of this she also really wanted for me to visit her. So. Enthusiastic and youthful romance. I saved almost all my allowance to visit her the very next holidays. I was so excited. Heart bumping. 5 hours train trip. Backwards ticket booked for 7 days later. Reading her text fly to me my love. Again and again and again. From this point the story is told in one sentence. I have never felt so terrible in my life. She picked me up from the train station. With her new boyfriend. My ex was the worst self-absorbed prick during a family emergency. My dad was hit by a car while riding his bike and I spent 12 days in the IQ and trauma unit with my dad. Who doesn't have any other family in town? My ex was a jerk the whole time calling to argue with me about our breakup while I was at my dad's bedside. It got to the point that I had to block his number to stop the distress he was causing. He would tell me horrible things like that I would make a bad mother. That I was entitled. That all of my problems I deserved. He'd throw gifts back on my doorstep and throw fits about my truck that was parked on his public street during the hospital stay since I was practically living at the hospital and couldn't care less about my pickup. And no. I didn't cheat on him. I was a good girlfriend and genuinely loved him and when we broke up and he started being cruel. I just asked him not to make something that was hard any be worse. Trying to hold it together for my dad's sake while someone you thought you knew and loved actively is trying to inflict hurt and pain is a shitty thing to have to go through. My friends were fabulous though. And really carried me through the situation. They helped take care of our dog, ex refused to help. Brought me clothes and food and underwear to the hospital and just were incredible. When I was 12 my dad went to Korea. He was in the army. He was going to be there for a year by himself. He moved me, my mom, my brother, and my sister into a little two bedroom shack. My mom had her own room. Me and my brother shared a room. And my sister made a makeshift room on the porch. It was a covered porch and was decently insulated. My mom went crazy. She started hanging out in chat rooms and flirting with random guys on the internet. She would do terrible things early in the night and tell us to go to bed so she could have private time. The house was really tiny so you could hear everything. Eventually my mom quit taking care of us. Me and my sister learned how to cook. I didn't know how to clean a house very well so it was a constant mess. We would have to beg our mom to go grocery shopping. She would get stuff we could cook with and would leave us alone again. She would get pissed if we didn't have food ready. I had to teach my brother stuff from school. I had to stick up for my brother and sister at school for being poor. I had to make sure my brother and sister had clothes for school and make sure they could go. My house was covered in dirty clothes and dishes and trash. My mom kept her adult toys laying around the house. We found kittens and tried to take care of them on our own but we were too young. The shit all over the house but we never knew where because the house constantly stank. My mom didn't care. She started cheating on my dad with random soldiers. She forced us to stay with strangers so she could go bang some soldiers a few states over. My dad came home and blamed it on me. He made us move to another state to live with my grandparents. Me and my siblings could have been put in foster care because of how shitty we were living. I had to take care of two kids at that age and I haven't been the same since. Someone in high school made me believe for a month or two that he was interested in me. But since I didn't know him I told him I wanted to know him better. After two months of him telling me nice things and stuff. I began to be interested too. 
and at that moment he told me to fuck off. That I was in fact very ugly and stupid. During the time I thought he was interested. He took a picture of me. After he told me he wasn't in fact interested. He photoshopped the picture to make it really bad and sent it to the whole school. The next day everyone was talking about it. He then became a sexual harasser and had lots of troubles with him. He made me fail test by whispering bad things to me. He would ask me in front of everyone if I liked dicks. When I answered no. I became a lesbian for 2 weeks. Even for other girls in the class. I was 13 years old. Looking back now. I know that answering yes would have had the same result. Except I would have been called a whore instead of a lesbian. Those are 3 of the many things this guy has ever done to me. It ended up with the police. I learned he had at least 20 other complaints against him. Including one of my friend. He had went to her house at night and tried to get in. Fortunately her stepfather was there to stop it. Afterwards. Other of his friends tried the same tactics with me. I now can't take compliments very seriously anymore because of this. And also I'm now paranoid about my friends actually faking it only to laugh at me afterwards and stuff.